the Armada Technologies Pro 700 Wire and Valve Locator. Your kit should consist of a transmitter and carrying case, a receiving wand, a set of black and red connecting leads, headphones, and a ground stake. Before you start, make sure these are all there. The Pro 700 transmitter takes eight D-cell batteries. To install the batteries, open the battery compartment on the right side of the transmitter by removing the two holding screws. Place the batteries in the holder with the negative and positive terminals assigned as shown on the diagram inside the battery compartment. Then replace the compartment and screws. To test the batteries, turn on the transmitter and push and hold the red battery test button. A reading of 10 or higher on the meter indicates the batteries are good and installed correctly. If you see no response, try adjusting the batteries and be sure they are fresh. The receiver unit takes one 9 volt battery. The battery compartment is on the underside of the receiver. To install the battery, remove the two screws in the battery compartment cover. Connect the positive and negative terminals on the top of the battery and place the battery in the compartment. Then replace the cover and screws. To test the receiver battery, turn the receiver on and press the battery test button on the underside of the receiver. The analog needle should move to the right to indicate the battery is good. To connect the headphones, plug them into the headphone jack on the underside of the receiver you will be able to hear the signal either on the receiver's external speaker or through headphones. Plug the black lead into the black outlet on the transmitter. And plug the red lead into the red outlet. In the next segment, we will show you how to ground the unit with a provided ground stake. Before connecting the ground, make sure the transmitter power is off. The Pro 700 could cause damage to the clock if it's on, and not voltage protected. So be sure to unplug it first. Also, disconnect the common wire and don't connect the transmitter to any circuits over 120 volts. You may need to use a length of wire to extend out to your grounding stake. If the black lead reaches your ground stake, you can clip the connector directly to the stake. You'll need to strip the insulation off the end of the wire then connect the black connector to the wire that leads to the ground. Don't use common grounds such as pipes or electrical grounds. It's important that the ground stake be in the soil and independent. Put your ground stake directly in the soil. Again, if you are using a length of wire to extend to your ground, you will need to strip the insulation off the end of the wire and wrap the exposed wire around the ground stake. Then push the ground stake down to ensure the best possible ground. Choose which wire you'd like to trace and get disconnect it from the clock. Then connect the red lead to the wire you want to trace. Turn the transmitter on and adjust the power output knob to increase the power until you achieve a reading between 4 and 8. 
the good ground is crucial. If you can't achieve a reading of 4, turn the unit off and repeat the grounding process. And now you are ready to use the Pro 700. After the transmitter has been properly connected and you've verified a good ground, turn on the receiver by turning the volume knob on the front of the receiver. You should hear a beeping sound indicating that the receiver is working. A high-pitched tone indicates that you are too close to the receiver or your batteries are low. A fading signal also indicates low battery. Begin tracing where the clock wires enter the ground. Point the receiver toward the ground and listen for the signal. The closer you are to the cable, the louder the signal should be, except when you are directly over the cable. Directly over the cable, the Pro 700 works on the null principle. This means that the signal is null or stops when the receiver is directly over the cable. As you approach a wire, the signal will intensify. If you are slightly to the left or right, the signal will be loudest. But pointing the receiver directly at the cable produces virtually no sound. In this way, you will know the exact location of the wire or cable being traced. Follow the null signal to trace the path of the wire. For best accuracy, keep the wand perpendicular to the ground. The volume control on the front of the receiver controls the volume for both the headphones and the external speaker. The analog meter on the front of the receiver will indicate the reception level visually. You can also find the approximate depth of the wire. First trace the path of the wire, then step to the left or the right of the wire path and hold the receiver at a 45 degree angle, pointing toward the wire. Find the angle that produces the null signal and use that angle along with the wire position to triangulate an approximate depth. Finding solenoids and valves. If you want to find a particular valve, connect the red lead of the transmitter to the station wire leading to that valve and the black to the ground. Connect the Pro 700 and begin. When you reach the point where a valve or solenoid is located, the signal will expand into an approximate 2-4 to four foot area of signal. This is your indication that you are over a valve or solenoid. Also, signal should not continue past this point 